Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Culination Media and welcome back to another episode of Metroid Prime. This is episode number 25 and in the last episode we left off here in the Talon Overworld. I did skip ahead to uh, saving at the ship, um, but that's what happened, so here we are. In any case, that's the door that we're heading towards um, because I haven't been through there yet and I'm not sure exactly what is over there. I think it's the impact crater, but I just want to check and make sure before we move on because it would be nice to have a good idea of where everything is. And I'm thinking that it is going to be the impact crater. Didn't show up on the map yet though because I didn't actually enter the room. I hate these spiny things. My goodness. I just cannot stand them. They hit me no matter where I'm standing. Yes, this is the impact crater indeed. There you go. Okay, so we'll be back here at the end of the game. Um, we're going to need to collect all of the Chozo artifacts before we uh, can move any further in here. Although technically we could go in there and get one of the stationary artifacts. The gimme that I've been talking about. But there's no point in really doing that. We'll just do it when we actually have to go there. So now where we're actually headed is going to be to the only other door in this room or area of the landing site uh, that we haven't been to yet. And that's going to be down this way. And I don't believe there's anything else in here for us. So we might as well just head on through. And oh goodness, look at all of these blast caps. They're everywhere. The name of this room is the Waterfall Cavern, and this is going to take us to the Frigate Crash Site. Uh, and we've been there quite a few times, um, especially when we were exploring the inside of the uh, Crash Frigate um, around Gravity Suit time. But uh, in any case, the only reason I'm heading back there is because there is a missile expansion that we can get. Uh, in the water there, so I want to get that before we move on. And after that, uh, we can probably head on back to the Phazon Mines. Oh look, flying space pirates with jetpacks. Let's see if we can kill one or two in one shot here. Yeah, don't close door. Thank you. Awesome, I got two in one shot. That was just awesome. I love the plasma beam, it is amazing. Take that. Oh, there's another one across the way. The one downside to the plasma beam is that it has a fairly short range. As you can see, the flame dissipates uh, after just a pretty short distance compared to the other beams. But uh, if you're able to actually connect with it and at close range, it's just lethal. In any case, this was supposed to be like the first time that we've ever seen Phazon, but we've seen it multiple times because we kind of skipped over this part. But, oh well. Alright, so we can now get to the other side by using the grapple beam if you want to. There's also another way to do it, and I'll show you that right now before we get the missile expansion. So you want to go uh, up on these little rock faces here. And if you have the gravity suit, you should be able to make that jump. And just continue to jump across. And then we can turn inside here and go into morph ball mode through this little crack and up we go and there we go we've made it across pretty nifty I guess but uh, we're not interested in anything over here we actually want to be in the water and as you can see you can um, actually see the missile expansion there so that's cool but unfortunately we can't get it just from down here because it's too high so probably gonna need to jump up onto this platform here and boom there we go Missile expansion. All right, so I forgot about something, so we're gonna do that before we head out to the Phazon Mines. We're in the Great Tree Hall here, and this is another room that we've come back to quite a few times here and there to get various things. There's a bunch of different rooms that lead off from here, so this is a pretty well-traveled area. Anyway, get rid of the enemies. There's two flower guys and a spiny guy forgetting their names at the moment. I just like Flower Guy and Spiny Guy better. So, going to jump up onto this platform where Flower Guy was and use your x-ray visor to see invisible 
equal one invisible platform and now you can make this jump all the way across barely and it will lead into the great tree chamber which is just a room by itself that doesn't lead to anything with a missile expansion for us yay okay we are in the life grove and there you go uh, this is where we got the x-ray visor way back when although I actually don't think it was that long ago it just feels like it's been a while but uh, in any case you just want to go into the water here and there's this little drain type thing that you can uh, blow the cap off of with a morph ball bomb and that will create a tower for us uh, in which we can use the boost ball to raise the platform and expose a Chozo artifact. So that was actually pretty easy, although it's kind of hard to see it if you don't come over here, but I don't remember how I originally found it the first time, but anyway, you can barely make the jump up there, just don't fall off, of course, and you can grab yourself a nice little Chozo artifact. Alright, so now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 out of 12. So we're missing 3, which means we're missing 1 outside of the phase on mines. So I guess we have to get to it. Alright, we are all the way back in the Chozo Ruins, and we've been in this room quite a few times. I believe it's called the Hall of, El of the Elders. And... Uh, now that we have the plasma beam, we can unlock this morph ball slot. So I'm going to do that. And we can lay a morph ball bomb in the slot there. And the throne that the Chozo statue is sitting on is going to slide forward and reveal a hidden ice beam door. So we should check that out. And we'll drop into the room below. And right in front of us is another Chozo artifact. So that means that uh, the only artifacts that we have left are the two that are in the Phazon Mines and then the stationary one in the Impact Crater. This is the Artifact of World, the 10th of 12, although it is our ninth artifact. All right, so now we're pretty much ready to head back to the Phazon Mines, and to do that we'll have to go through Magmore Caverns. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys something. Here we are in the Magmore workstation. If you were clever enough to figure this out by studying the map, you'll realize that this elevator, although it's different from the first elevator that we used to get to Phazon Mines, um, you'll find that this elevator leads pretty much right to uh, the question marked area called Elite Research in the mines that we're supposed to be headed towards. Um, and it would make sense for you to go here because it would just cut out a whole bunch of stuff, right? Well, uh, not really. This actually is not the correct way to go, and I want to show you why before I just skip ahead to uh, heading towards the main quarry elevator, which is where we first got uh, to the mines from. As you can see, there's just phase on everywhere. We don't have the suit upgrade that we need to be able to travel through here without getting killed. So we're going to have to head back to the other elevator, and that's what we're going to do now. All right, so I skipped over all that stuff because it just took way too long. We're back in the mines here just outside of the main quarry. This is the first security area. We've been here before, and you will get attacked by shadow pirates, so just bring out to your, either your x-ray visor or your uh, thermal visor. I like the thermal visor, visor better, but it's all about preference. Kill them off. And then we'll be in that long winding room from before where we first met the uh, wave troopers. And there's going to be a bunch more to fight. It's going to be wave troopers and ice troopers. So that's kind of fun. Notice the plasma beam door here behind this uh, electrical or energy fence thing uh, that we can't get into right now uh, but we do have the weapon to open it or at least get to the computer that will open it for us uh, we'll be doing that in a minute first we got to get rid of all these ridiculous troopers that are driving me crazy I hate these things look at us with 205 missiles though I used the wavebuster once so 
I must have had a lot of missiles. We are getting there. I mean, I don't even know how many more missile expansions we have to get, but it's not many. Oh crap, I hate turrets. Not a big fan of the turrets. Probably should just use my plasma beam because that does a lot more damage than the wave beam. Probably two or three charge shots would kill it just from full health. Alright, and I knew that the ice beam trooper guys were around the corner, so just kill that guy with the ice spreader, which is awesome by the way, I love the ice spreader. You can also just freeze them with a charge shot like so, and then blow them up with a missile, and they break instantly. Um, so that's also pretty easy, and it also is easier on the missiles because you only use one instead of the ten from the ice spreader. So there's that. If you can get them all in a group and hit them with the ice spreader, you can kill all of them in one hit, which would be awesome. It's still not cost effective when it comes to uh, the whole missile thing, but that's okay. All right, so that Benthesium gate can now be destroyed with the power bomb that we. Uh, acquired since we were last in this room and that will power down the uh, electrical force field or energy force field whatever it's supposed to be that was blocking the plasma beam door and now we have to go all the way back there and it's kind of a long journey especially when none of those barriers are destroyed and you have to go around all of them probably going into morph ball mode wasn't the fastest way to do that but that's all right so head on through and it's just a small little item room and we now have the flamethrower and it is the last of the super missile upgrades uh, for the various beams we have the wave buster the ice spreader and now the flamethrower and this is by far the worst out of all of them um, it just has almost no range and does almost the same amount of damage as the uh, regular plasma beam does it's pretty cool to look at, but as you can see, the range was just awful, uh, and it does suck up a lot of missiles as well, and it's just not really worth it, so you probably won't see me use it at all. Uh, or if you do, it'll only be maybe once or twice, because I just really don't think it's that useful. I think there's um, actually all of the other ones are a good use for your missiles, but that one just it just isn't so that's that in any case we have more shadow pirates here and they are no match for uh, the plasma beam in fact they get knocked back a little bit each time that you hit them so you just knock them to the other side of the room and before you know it they're dead it only takes maybe five hits from a non charge shot to completely wipe them out they're not that powerful not that hardy at all uh, we do have an upcoming battle coming up here, so uh, make sure that you're prepared for that. Try to have somewhat a somewhat decent amount of health, because this could get sticky. Although I don't normally have a very difficult time with this battle. So as you can see, there's a huge, what appears to be an elite space pirate in the uh, glass casing there. We're in elite research, by the way. And now, all you have to do is go up to his tank and use a power bomb, and that will break open the case that he's uh, encased in. And make sure you scan him because he's a different kind of pirate. He's the Phazon Elite, Elite Pirate infused with energized Phazon. The Phazon charged Elite Pirates rely more on their Wave Quake generators, opting not to carry the vulnerable plasma artillery cannons normally used by Elites. The direct fusing of Phazon into their bodies provides a tremendous level of energy. The drastically lower lifespan that comes with this process is of little concern to the pirate research team. So these guys uh, can do more damage, they're a little bit faster, um, and they can take more hits as well. So what's the strategy? It's virtually the same, although I suggest using the Ice Beam because it will freeze him and kind of reset his cycle whereas the plasma beam, the flamethrower, all that stuff really just doesn't seem to be as effective uh, so I mean you could use the wave buster and you can just keep it on him but um, if he starts to block it you're just wasting all of your missiles really fast the ice spreader only uses 10 per shot whereas the wave buster has the opportunity to use a lot more 
Um, and as long as you don't fire it when he has his uh, beam absorber up, like what I just did a minute ago, you should be okay. And it takes about five hits from the ice spreader with missile shots, and he goes down pretty easily. And then where his case was, we will be able to grab the next Chozo artifact. So we have two left. And if you are keeping track, that means that we only have one left to find here in the mines. The other one is going to be in the impact crater itself that we get automatically. So we are in good shape here. We have 10 out of 12. Uh, so when it comes to getting to the end of the game, we're going to be pretty much just ready to jump right into it. And the only thing we'll have to worry about is... Oh, crap. That's not what I wanted to do. I didn't realize there were all these cannons up here. All right. Uh... What was I saying? Oh yeah, when we get to the end of the game, we'll be able to just get right to it and only have to worry about missile expansions and energy tanks that we want to grab. In any case, moving on here, make sure you take out those turrets and don't just run rec recklessly up here like what I did. Because that didn't work out, I got thrown off the edge. Ah, more turrets. Crap. Leave me alone. These things are everywhere. Oh, you can actually kill them with one charge shot from the plasma beam. I didn't think that was going to be possible. None of the other beams can take it out in one hit. But apparently the plasma beam is just that powerful. Alright, we're in the research access. And it's like a tunnel thingamajiggy. We've been in all these rooms before, so this should be nothing new. Oh, crap. Crap, there are Metroids everywhere in this room. This place is just infested with them. So make sure that you have a decent amount of power bombs, as well as uh, blah, 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 your ice beam ready to go, because these things will follow you. Uh, even when you're in morph ball mode, there's not really much that you can do about it. I do suggest trying to kill them off first before trying to traverse the room, but because they'll do that and just run into you and knock you off stuff, and it's really annoying. But there's really not much that you can do. Um, I mean, you can kill them with the ice beam and a missile from afar, but that's kind of annoying because there's a lot of them, so I'm trying to skip over that. Doesn't appear as though it's going to work. But hey, so I'm going to head up the yellow track here. This will take us to the top of the room. Name of the room is Ore Processing, by the way, in case you were wondering. This is actually right around where we got the grapple beam. In fact, I think it was the door that is directly in front of us which is where we grabbed the grapple beam originally. In any case, let's see here. Oh, crap. Dang, all right, he was ready to eat me. That was kind of creepy. All right, this guy's a little bit slower, obviously, mentally. Get rid of him. And I'm thinking that that is gonna be the door that we wanna head through, so let's jump down there. I probably should have just taken a different path, but I didn't want to mess with the whole trying to spin it around crap. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay, moving on here. We have bomb moves, so you're going to want to either just jump down and cut your losses or try to destroy as many as possible before jumping down. Doesn't matter. I kind of fell down by accident there, but that's okay. And we're going to take the elevator and... Down we go. I'm actually going to uh, call it an episode soon-ish. Um, because we do have a lot to do. And I'm just going to cut it mid-action. We're not going to make it to a safe station. So I should probably blow these up. Because I need missiles pretty badly. I'm under 100. And I can carry over 200 now. So I wasted a lot on the uh, Phazon Elite Pirate. Alright, so in this room, you can just blow up this box right here and that'll destroy the shadow pirates that we're hiding or were they regular pirates I don't even know it doesn't even matter we're in the elite control access room and we've been in here before as well and oh the music has started that means that there's plenty of space pirates in here oh they're shadow pirates okay well, I don't have my plasma beam out. Now I do. Okay, now this will be smooth sailing. With how fast this shoots, shadow pirates and regular space pirates have no chance to do anything to you. Name of the room is Elite Control, and uh, it appears as though there's an elevator on either side of us. And it's 
other one, this other door takes us eventually around to another elevator, right? Yes, and this one we haven't been to yet. That's over by Metroid Quarantine A. And we probably should go both directions. I'm just not sure which one is the way that I want to go first. We do need to do some exploring on both sides of that elevator. Said elevators, whatever. Okay, so there's shadow pirates hanging out on the ceiling with the thermal visor or x-ray visor. You can just incinerate them before they even get a chance to drop down. And that was it. No more space pirates in this room. It's just stupid shadow pirates. I like fighting the power troopers or beam troopers or whatever they're called. They actually can absorb some hits. It's more of a fight. All right, so this takes us over to the way I'm headed now is uh, towards Metroid Quarantine A. And I think what I want to do is go through the other elevator first because I'm almost positive that it will lead to a dead end and a missile expansion or two. So we'll go that way first and then we can turn around and I'll just cut ahead to when we go over to the Metroid quarantine area. And that sounds like a good plan. I don't know if it's actually gonna work out the way I want it to, but we're gonna try. So we're gonna go through this ice beam door here and we actually couldn't go this way before because as you can see, oh, I keep boosting my way out of there. No, stop doing that. Power bomb, thank you. Okay, that was made of bendesium apparently. You can blow it up with a power bomb, and uh, then you can continue your way through the tunnel. And oh, okay, power troopers, awesome. I was just asking for those, but we're gonna end the episode here, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and next time we do some more exploring. Stay tuned for episode number 26. Game on.